Wow. Today, we're going to take it back to my musical beginnings. Yes, we are going way back. <laughs> I've been doing this for a bit. We're going to take it all the way back to when I first started a band, what that band did for me, what I learned from that. But more importantly, this video is not meant to be like a motivational and inspirational video, but the overall theme of this video is you have to start somewhere. Most of the stories that I'm gonna tell from how I got into the industry, what I had to do, what I wanted to do, my passion, my love, everything that went along with it, it was all about just starting somewhere. You just say, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna do it. That's really gonna be the overarching theme of this video and my background. That motorcycle is really loud. So we're gonna take it back to 1999. Yes, 1999. That was when I started my first band called Underminded. Me and a few friends from high school at the time decided to just get in a, in a basement and just jam. And we were part of a very small circle of people at our high school at the time that were into the kind of music that we liked, which was which was like underground punk rock and what was pop punk at the time. None of us knew what we were doing. I had been playing my instrument the longest versus some of the other guys. So there were some people in the original lineup that had literally just been playing an instrument for maybe weeks, if not just a few months. So we were very new. We were very rough. It was very raw, but Hell, it was so much fun. We didn't have any goals in mind of like, we're gonna go, we're gonna play shows and we're gonna go on tour and we're gonna do this, we're gonna get signed to a label. No, we just wanted to make noise. We all knew and I knew at that time in my life that I just wanted that outlet. I wanted to scream into a mic. I wanted to turn my amp up as loud as possible and just make a ton of noise. And we sucked, we totally sucked and that was great. Because you know what? You have to start somewhere. We weren't gonna be Green Day or Blink or MXPX right out of the gates. No, you have to put in time and effort. And that was what those first couple years of starting a band were really like. And it wasn't until the year 2000 that we decided we should start playing some shows. And at that time, we had gotten who I thought was like the sickest drummer at the time and, and is an incredible drummer, by the way. I shouldn't say at the time, he is a great drummer, was Mike Fuentes from Pierce the Veil. He started playing drums for us when he was a teenager. And so we had graduated from the basement of our then bass player. And we graduated to the Fuentes household where we would rehearse, write and record in the Fuentes household. So Underminded would have practice for an hour, an hour and a half. And then Vic would come in with early times before today, which ended up becoming Pierce the Veil, they would come in and have their rehearsals. And we just kind of came up together. We would we would play shows together. We started booking our shows together, playing house parties, playing any show that we possibly could. And again, this goes back into, you have to start somewhere. Like we didn't, none of us knew what we were doing. We didn't have booking agents. We didn't have record labels. We had no guidance really. Like we just went into a blind. Like we all went to shows all of the time. The goal was to just get all of our friends from school to come see us at the show. So if we could draw 20 people, 50 people, sometimes 100 people, that was like amazing. I was like, we're, we're doing it. This is so awesome. And then as Underminded started to progress, we started building a fan base. We would stand outside of every single show you could think of on the weekend and pass out flyers or at the time, we would burn CDs with one or two songs on it just to get people to find out who we were. And at the time, we were playing at a venue in San Diego called The Epicenter, and John Pebsworth was the venue kind of operator who was the singer of a band called Buck 09. They were a very popular ska band in San Diego, and he became kind of like my first mentor. He was the first person who kind of taught me how to book shows and kind of uh, like show etiquette and band etiquette. And um, I ended up learning a lot from him. And he was one of the first people that ever told me like, you are you are great at what you do, 
and you should absolutely set the bar high for yourself and try to go on tour and try to get signed. And suddenly that helped build a confidence in me hearing that from somebody who had had a lot of success in the industry. And that was just how I kind of got in the door. And it wasn't until 2000, 2001 that all I wanted to do was be in a band. I lived and breathed it. It was a passion of mine and I was undeterred by people saying that I couldn't do it or if there was only five people at a show, I was just excited that there was five people there. You have to start somewhere. Again, we're gonna keep on going back to this topic. And I knew that it wasn't gonna be overnight and I had to grind and I had to work so hard. And that was what I enjoyed. I loved it so much. I loved standing outside of venues and meeting new people and just trying to get one person to to get into the band, to get into Undermined and come out to a show. So we started just recording our own demos and giving them out, not even, not even trying to sell them, just getting anybody to listen to us. And in 2003, we started to get some attention from labels. Now, it was all because of Buzz. We, it was all, it was all just a Southern California Buzz that we were building. I think that most of the labels at the time were finding out about us on mp3.com, which at the time was where people were finding music. Like that's how I found like Rufio and a bunch of great bands. And from there, that's how we set up label showcases at the time. So in 2003, I remember specifically, there was three labels that were interested in us. One night we played a show at the Chain Reaction in Anaheim, California, and Hopeless Records came out. At the time, we were huge fans of Avenged Sevenfold who were on Hopeless, and Undermine had played a lot of shows with Avenged Sevenfold at the time. We would we would play shows with them in Anaheim and LA. I'm, I'm fairly certain that we got them their first show ever in San Diego, and so we would just go back and forth and play shows with each other. And I think that helped get some attention from Hopeless. Hopeless Records comes out to our show at the Chain Reaction. I am so excited. I'm like, oh my god. There was a ton of people there. I was so confident going into that show thinking Hopeless is going to totally love our show and they're going to offer us a deal. Um, no. They passed on us and they were so kind but they passed on us and I remember just feeling defeated in the moment but that only fueled my fire more. And then we had a label showcase at a bar in Anaheim that was near the chain reaction. Yeah, there was like nobody there. And I just thought, man, this is the worst way to put on a label showcase. There's nobody here. And and the two labels that came out that night were Epitaph Records and Kung Fu Records. I distinctly remember halfway through our set that Epitaph walked out. They <laughs> they were not feeling it. Um, maybe it was just because there wasn't a whole lot of people there. Maybe we weren't feeling it. We could they could sense that we were nervous. I don't know what it was, but they just straight up walked out. I just remember that so vividly. But Kung Fu Records was there and specifically the owner, Joe Escalante, who is the bassist in a band called The Vandals, which I was a huge fan of growing up. And it was like a scene out of a movie where as soon as we got off stage, we went outside to cool off and Joe Escalante comes out. He just tells us, I loved your set. I wanna sign you guys. It was one of those moments that when you have to start somewhere, see, I did it. And <clears throat> that hard work, and all of that time and effort, that blood, sweat, and tears that you put into something finally pays off in a way that you can't put into words. Being in a band and grinding so hard and then having someone love your work so much that they want to release it and be a part of it, it was a very life-changing moment for me. I learned so much being on Kung Fu Records and how to record a record, how to tour on a record. And in that process, that really opened the door to me wanting to learn more and more about the industry. I was so consumed by all the back end of things, how, how the marketing worked, how a budget worked, how all of these different aspects of being in a band combined into this business. I found great pleasure in and learning so much. I just wanted to know everything. And so we did our first record with Kung Fu Records called Hail an American. And that record really put us on, on a small map, but put us on the map. They had a lot of bigger bands at the time, but Joe Escalante really took a chance with us because at the time, Kung Fu was really just a punk rock 
label, whereas we were a bit on the heavier side. We were kind of in the hardcore realm of music. You know, there wasn't any singing. It was all screaming and it was aggressive. And he took a chance on us and I will always forever be thankful to him for doing that. He took us on our first tour overseas. That was the first time I ever went to Europe and to the UK was when I was in Underminded. My first tour overseas was in 2004 or 2005 when our record came out. 2004 was a very important year for me. It was an important year because it was the first time we ever got to do the Vans Warp Tour. In 2003, we got to play one show locally, which was insane. We played on a local stage in, in 2003 on the Warp Tour and it was under a tent and we had so many kids there that were losing their mind during our set that we had to stop it several times because the tent was collapsing. It was a crazy time. You don't see stages like that anymore because of reasons like that. Like it was, it could have been a complete disaster and people could have gotten seriously hurt. Fortunately, nobody did, but that was our first introduction to Warp Tour. As a band, that was our first introduction to playing Warp Tour. And that was always a dream of mine growing up. The first Warp Tour I ever went to was in 1997, 1998. That was an important summer for me that I told myself like, whatever I have to do in starting a band, like that would be so cool to do that someday. A few years later, I was fortunate enough to do that and go on to play it many, many times after that. But in 2004, we were given the opportunity to play the band's Warp Tour. I remember getting the phone call from our manager at the time that we get to play the whole entire summer. I remember just like yelling on the phone, so excited. And then he hit me with a but. He said, but you're gonna have to set up a stage every day. And you have to break down that stage every day. And you have to play first every single day on that stage and you have to do it in an abandoned trailer. And did I mention you're not getting paid? <laughs> and you know what? When all of that was said to me, I did not care. I said, I'm down. Sign me up. We're going on tour. Whatever we have to do, we're doing the work tour. And again, the overarching theme, you have to start somewhere. I never want to look for a handout. The reward and benefits of working your ass off and especially doing it at something that you're passionate about, you will go to the ends of the earth to progress in what you do and to be successful in what you do. There's like a badge of honor that comes with putting in the hours, putting in the time, putting in the blood, sweat, and tears for what you do and what you love and finding success through that. And so I didn't care that we had to do that. And it was the hardest summer of my life, hands down, the hardest summer. But you know what? It was also the most fun summer. I would never trade it for anything because it really instilled hard work into what I do, a hard work ethic. It only fueled my fire more. And being able to, to do that tour and just being able to do what I love, it was well worth the blood, sweat, and tears. You have to start somewhere. Through, through all the stories that I will tell in this video and in future videos, it's not an overnight thing. You just have to throw yourself into it if you love what you're doing so much you don't view it as a job you just want to put in the time you just you you wake up wanting to do this and that's something that i still feel every single day of my life and being an underminded was such an important part of my life and an important part of my story and where I am today. And grinding in a van in a trailer, multiple vans by the way, like our first van was a late 70s van with shy carpet and the speedometer didn't work and the gas gauge didn't work so you never knew how fast you were going even though there was no way you could go over 55 in this thing. And you never knew if you were on empty. And we would buy Rand McNally road maps like these massive books that would give you breakdowns of each state so that you could figure out how to get to where you need to go. And we would actually measure it with a ruler and see, you know, from point A to point B is this many miles and this is the route that we're going to take. So we're going to need to get gas at this point because that's X amount of miles. Like it was a lot of math and it was hard. It was difficult. And I don't remember ever making a cent in Underminded. We never came home with money. It was always a loss. Like we would have to put in money before a tour just to be able to do a tour. We had to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. It's not gonna be handed to you. I never expected that we were gonna go on a tour 
and make money and sell out shows and do all of that. Cause that's not what it was about. What it was about and still is for me is playing music. I realized at a young age that that was my outlet. That's what I wanted. And no matter what I have to do, I'm gonna do it. That drive and determination is what has fueled my love for being in a band and doing what I do. And that's something that still drives me to this day is it's the music. Maybe that's cheesy to some people. And for a lot of musicians, it's not that. And a lot of musicians view what they do in a different way and to each his own. For everybody, it's different. But for me, it's always been about my outlet, which is playing a guitar, screaming into a mic. And the huge plus of all of that is that it's now my job. It's my career. And that I get to go on stage and do that and share that with other people and with you guys, with our fans. And that is something that I can never properly put into words as to what that means to me and how that fuels me even more because it's not just about me anymore. It's about you guys. It's about the people that come out to our shows and the love that I have for them and the love I have for this musical family that I'm a part of. I, I miss it a lot. And as I talk about this, it obviously leads into my current day of being in Sirens, but it's really important for me to tell this story of how I even got here in the, in the first place. And this is just a small part of it. I, there's plenty of stories within my years and Undermined that I would love to share more of. And the stories of being on the road and the hardships that I faced and the amazing stories and amazing people that I met along the way. And yeah, this is just a video to kind of give a quick glimpse as to my journey and to where I am today. And I just started in a basement with a couple of other dudes that sucked just as much as I sucked. And that was fun, it didn't matter. It was just about making noise and wanting to be a part of something that meant so much to us, which was music, punk rock music, whatever it may be, but it was all based around a love for music. As I'm going through this video, I'm realizing there's a lot more that I want to share about my, my journey. So I'm gonna make more videos pertaining to that. I guess I just wanted to kind of open the door into my beginnings and I can definitely break down more into how we started booking shows, which is completely different now. So I guess I can't really make a video on that. I mean, we used to go on a site called Book Your Own F***ing Life and just hit up random promoters and venues throughout the whole United States. And we would just show up to these venues hoping that there was a show and sometimes there wasn't. We would show up to venues and there'd be not even a promoter there, not a single person there, and we would just have to head on to the next city. It was a very, very different time. And I think going through all of that has made me so humble, so, so humble, and also so grateful and appreciative for what I get to do now. I started in a van, sleeping in a van constantly for eight years of my life, not making a single cent and barely having enough money to eat on the road, hoping that we could just scrape enough dollars together to stay at a, at a Motel 6 so we could shower, sleeping at random people's houses on their floors, knowing nothing about them. And all of these things that most people would view as like negative and like, I don't want to do that. All of those things shape me and who I am today. Going through all of that trial and error, going through all of those really difficult, tough times and now being able to do what I do on the level that I do, I don't take it for granted. I appreciate the hell out of what I do so much more because of where I started and where I came from. And I'm so grateful for my years and Undermined. Here's just a little glimpse into, uh, like I said, into my, into my story and how I got to be to where I am today. Thanks for checking this out. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you like the video, spread the word. I appreciate you guys so, so much. And I will be doing some more videos talking about the industry and how I came to be where I am today. There's a lot of stories. There's hours upon hours upon hours of stories to share with you guys, and I can't wait to do that. Again, much love to you guys, and have an awesome day, have an awesome week, and much love.